Hey there, hi there, ho there! Welcome to Geology. Sorry. Uh, my name is Professor Kovach. I'm going to take you through a journey of geology, uh, on a journey of geology through a series of lecture videos. Each unit is going to have a series of lecture videos that you need to watch and listen to. Don't just watch, don't just listen, watch and listen. This is a visual and auditory experience. That's how you're going to learn best from these. So each unit is going to start off with a series of videos uh, over a particular unit as a lecture. Um, after the videos, you will be required to answer uh, some questions, question or questions, I should say. Uh, and this information will be utilized in class. So <clears throat> you'll get used to how all of this works. So this is unit one. Each lecture is broken up into uh, a number of different sections. Each section will have its own particular video. So I think for this one, there are six different videos. The videos can range anywhere from a few minutes up to 15 minutes maximum. Okay, so let's just jump into it just to see how we do. So uh, the first unit is kind of just uh, overall on geology and earth formation. That's a good place to start. That's a good place to start the story of geology when the earth formed. So let's first talk about geology as a science. What is geology? So every once in a while, you'll, you'll see me ask these, you know, questions and run, what is geology? And I might give you a, a second, you know, a few seconds to just ponder that. And I want you to do so. So what is geology? Thought about it? Let's see if what you thought about kind of jives with what geology truly is. At the very kind of book definition, geology is the scientific study of Earth through the past 4.54 billion years. That's how old the Earth is. 4.54 billion years old. <clears throat> um, the specific branch of geology that this class deals with is physical geology, which is the understanding of the Earth's processes and materials. So processes like plate tectonics, how earthquakes occur, how volcanoes work, the processes and the materials, the rocks, the minerals, what the ground is made out of, etc. So it is kind of the more general or basics of geology when people think about geology. Now, what does a geologist do? Well, m many different things. A geologist doesn't just study rocks. That's something they might do. But branches of ge geology includes volcanology, study of volcanoes, study of ice, that's still Earth's material. Um, geology is needed in engineering and construction, underwater geology, even geologists on the moon. In fact, one of the fastest growing uh, uh, sections of geology is planetary geology, understanding the, the geology of other celestial objects in an effort to better understand Earth. So it's not just rocks. It's a lot more. Why, why would anybody study this stuff? It, you know, you're, you're taking the class. Well, why, why should one study geology? Well, the one I think studies any science because you're looking to fix some problem. It's not just knowing something. It's knowing stuff, but how can that information help in some way, shape, or form? So why study geology? It's to attempt to understand uh, and to fix society's most important problems. And that can be dealt with, with geology. For instance, energy, water, mineral resources. You need to understand geology. The environment in general. Planet Earth. You need to study geology. Climate change. You've got to understand the Earth and what's going on. Natural hazards. You know, being aware and understanding how to deal with landslides, volcanoes, earthquakes, floods, etc. Earth's our home planet. I think some of you might be in this class just because, you know, you're kind of curious about where you live. That being Earth. We depend on the Earth for everything. If it's not... Stuff only comes from two places. Anything... Look around you. Anything around you. If it's not grown, it's mined out of the ground. So if it's not grown from the ground, it's mined, pulled out of the ground in some way, shape, or form. Like, look at anything around you. Um, you know, the, the cotton fibers in your clothes. Well, that's grown. Uh, the paper that makes up a book. Well, the trees, that's grown. What about the plastic that might make up your lunch containers? Well, plastic actually is derived from petroleum, from oil. 
pull from the ground. Everything we know we get from the earth. So we depend on earth for well, everything. That being said, there's still limited resources. And, and knowledge and management, thoughtful management, is very important. The processes and, uh, affect everyone. The, the processes that are going on inside the earth actually have an effect on the outside of the earth and the climate as well. And I think one last thing is just to appreciate our role in geologic change. The more people there are on this planet, the more we can actually do things to the surface. Sometimes for good, most likely for bad. You know, we are leaving a scar on the earth, physically and, and, and metaphorically speaking, and this will be seen in the rock record. Rock record. So we need to understand our role in geologic change. Um, you know, this is kind of a, a, a sad plaque that is in Iceland. Um, it's at the foot of, well, where was once a glacier. And I'll, I'll read it to you. Uh, and the plaque, uh, this is in Icelandic. I'll read the English version. A letter to the future. Ak is the first Icelandic glacier to lose its status as a glacier. In the next 200 years, all our glaciers are expected to follow the same path. This monument is to acknowledge that we know what is happening and what needs to be done. Only you know if we did it. That, that stings. We know what's happening and we know what needs to be done. So, let's see if you, did, you do anything about it, humans. So this was posted August of 2019 when the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was at 415 parts per million which today it's higher than that. That's the main driver of climate change. We have to understand our role in changing the earth and be honest with that because it's only being honest with that that things can start to change. That leads me to kind of one random thought t tied closely to what I just spoke about, but that needs to be said. What is a theory? Well, I can tell you uh, exactly what most people think it is. You know, theory is, to most people, a guess, your idea, your opinion. Oh, that's just your theory. That's just your guess. That's just your idea. That's your opinion. That's not what a theory is in science. The th a theory in science is almost the absolute opposite of how we've dumbed down the definition of theory. Theory in science is the highest level of knowing. That's the exact opposites of opinion or guess. So theory as it's used in everyday language versus what theory actually means in science. Theory is the highest level of knowing. Nothing higher. A theory in science is testable. It's repeatable. A theory in science has never been proven false. That's different than something being true. It's never been proven false, and it's widely accepted. So we don't deal necessarily, I don't like to say in science we deal with truth. What we do in science, we look at all the information in front of us, and we see how the data, or what the data is trying to tell us. We can run experiments with that data to see if you know we're getting repeatable results. And if we do, and, it, and we can't prove it false, and it's widely accepted in the scientific community, it becomes you know a scientific theory. We don't really use that word too much in science. Because, you know, there are only a few things that have reached this level, all right? We can talk about principles and laws, but a theory is the highest of the high. So, the theory of evolution, oh, that's just a theory. That's just their guess on how humans evolved. No, it's a theory, meaning the theory of evolution is the highest level of science. It's testable. We have evidence. Those tests give us repeated results. Evolution is a thing. Theory of evolution has never been proven false. It's never been proven false. The Big Bang Theory. Well, that's just the theory on how the, the universe started. Yeah, it's a theory. It's never been proven false. Gravity is a theory. I'm sure most people don't doubt gravity. It's never been proven false. The beauty of something never being proven false versus true is that science allows for growth and change with new information. Maybe with new information, the theory of evolution isn't quite right. As of right now, it's pretty darn good. You know, something comes along, oh, that changes our idea. Well, okay, great. Let's, let's change a little bit. So you can always get better in science. 
it's it's left room for always getting better. Because you never know. All right. That's the beauty of science. And it's, you know, with the theory, it's never been proven false. That's different than truth. I don't like to deal with truth. There are some things that, you know, they are what they are. But hey, with new evidence, new information, who knows? Our ideas of how volcanoes work can change. We're pretty solid on, on what it is, but there could be new information. So in any case, just be careful. I throw this in the first video, in the first unit. Just be careful with that word, theory. Are you using it properly in terms of science? Or are you using it in a common everyday language that's not really using it correctly? Fun facts. All right, so that's how the videos usually go. So that's section one of the lecture. The lecture is provided to you in Canvas. If you want to follow along with the document uh, that I provide in Canvas, you may. Not necessary. But we'll go ahead and pause here. When we'll come back, we'll talk about section two. Just very briefly go over a history of geology. I'll see you back here in just a second.